This presentation will cover ACS ARES program. It will start with an overview of ACS ARES and then cover Area 2 EOCs, networks and operation. Uh, and of course, it's great to view this program for ACS ARES members, but it really is for all interested parties. Uh, our presenter today is Zach Cohen. He is the Emergency Coordinator for Area 2 and has extensive background in technical training. He was a trainer in communications and emergency procedures for the U.S. Navy. He also conducted training for Pacific Telephone on engineering procedures for central office switching systems, cutovers to electronic switching, and other such uh, tasks that were being done uh, during the period of time. Uh, Zach was uh, the consultant manager for the Ernest & Young Los Angeles office specializing in designing and auditing major business training programs. He then started his own consulting firm uh, that conducted course development and instruction for companies including Cisco Systems, Aruba, GTE, AT&T, Apple, USC, BCR, and other companies for 35 years. He also was a speaker and regional officer for the IEEE. After retirement, he has conducted training for CVARC and ACSARES. Uh, and uh, with that, oh my goodness, let's go ahead and uh, you know what? Zach, take it over. Oh, thank you, everybody. Let me share my screen. Oops, let's see if I get this right. After all this, it's... Uh... Okay, does everyone see that? Uh-oh. Nope, we don't, have, uh, we don't have your screen shared there, Zach. Okay, let me go back to... Ah! There is the garbanzo bean. There it is. All right. Can everyone see that? Oh, that's right. <laughs> everyone is muted. Wonderful. See, this is the hard part when you're doing a Zoom and not in front of a whole bunch of people. So we're going to talk about ACS ARES, starting with an overview. We're going to talk about what is ACS, what are what ARES is. It is a volunteer organization of amateur radio operators and non-radio operators, which provides emergency communications to everybody, the county, law enforcement, hospitals, Red Cross, all critical government agencies. Because remember, when all other forms of electronic communications fail, they want us ham operators. Now let's talk about what it is. There's two real groups in here. There's ARES, and ARES is the Amateur Radio Emergency Services, and that uh, came from, in the 1930s, the Amateur Radio Emergency Corps. The ARRL is the major uh, actor in here, and it does all the heavy lifting for emergency communications. It is a private nonprofit organization ARL through its field service organization gives the organization structure of the whole ARES. If you're an ARL member in your local area, uh, you can go and in our local area, we have Rob who's in charge of, uh, in charge of our ARL. And I'm gonna give a, uh, at the end of it, I'm gonna give a, a little picture of the uh, uh, chain of command. And uh, we have all the titles that we use in ACS come from ARL, emergency coordinator, official observer, uh, all the different titles we have, uh, assistant emergency coordinator, all those come from the ARL and the ARL maintains a listing of all of this. The ARL runs the ARES and the ARS is always, always there. When we go over and there's an emergency, 
the government through Ventura County starts ACS. I'll talk about ACS and RACES in a moment, but let's continue on with ARES. There's two forms of emergency communication, some things that we do, and we'll discuss in which, uh, which area we do this. In the agencies, they're AS, ACS focused because it is part of the government. Law enforcement, the cities, the hospitals, certain DART even come under a lot of this government uh, operation. During emergency, we operate with ACS. ARS focuses on the national level, people to people, communications via amateur radio. In an emergency, we typically don't do this, but we do have, we touch into it, which I'll get into in a moment. The ARES starts out with the ARL, the four field organizations. And let me show you what the structure is. Here's the structure of ARES. The ARL is in charge of the whole thing. It goes through the different divisions. We are a member of Southwest Division under John Kitchens. Then we go into the different sections. We're in the Santa Barbara section. And in the Santa Barbara section, well, it's hard without a pointer here. Well, I guess I have a pointer. Santa Barbara section. Uh, we are Santa Barbara section. Now we're in uh, Ventura County. Our district emergency coordinator in Ventura County is Rob Hansen. And under that, we have the different areas. We have eight areas in, uh, in Ventura County. We are area two. We'll go into more of that in a second. ACS is different. ACS comes from RACES. RACES is a radio amateur civil emergency services, which started in around 1952. At the end of World War II, all the emergency communications was part of civil defense. And they decided to take the civil defense and make RACES. So the RACES is really run by the government. In Ventura County, we call RACES ACS. In LA County, they call it DCS. So every, every county has their own designation. A lot of the counties, and most of them call them just RACES. But here in uh, Ventura County, it is ACS. It's run under FEMA, under the state OES, Office of Emergency Services, and under the county. We fall under the sheriff's part of the county. We are act when we're activated, we steal all of the ARES titles. We steal everything that the ARS, uh, ARL has and we use it as our, as our hierarchy. So talk about ACS, FEMA is involved with the state of California, Office of Emergency Services. We have three different areas, uh, three different regions. One is coastal region, the inland region, and the southern region. We're in the southern region. So in talking about the hierarchy, we fall under the uh, southern region, and we do fall under Ventura County. Ventura County, we have the Office of Emergency Services. Then under the Office of Emergency Services, under the ham radio section, we have one person called the radio officer, and that's Rob Hansen. So he falls under that, under the Office of Emergency Services. When we are activated, he takes another title. He's the DEC, District Emergency Coordinator, and he starts the whole process of taking ARES and using it for emergencies under ACS, under ACES. Here is the regional administration regions. We're in the Southern region. On Monday morning and on uh, Monday night, on a Wednesday morning, Area 2, uh, well, Ventura County checks in to the Office of Emergency Services. We have a net. And in the net, they, you check in by which region. And in the region, they check in by who you are in the region. We have our Ventura County check-in. And we have the uh, assistant or the uh, alternate Ventura County, which is East County Sheriff Stations. In case Ventura County up in Ventura falls underwater, goes off into the ocean, starts floating away, TO City takes over. So we check in. 
It's amazing to listen to that net because every station checks in different counties, uh, different, uh, uh, different agencies check in. They also have interstate check-ins from other states checking in. So it's an interesting thing to hear. We're in the south, southern region. There we are in Ventura. Now the radio operator who become, uh, uses district emergency coordinator has a lot of different duties. During an emergency, he's in charge. He's the one that gets the activation orders and activates the areas that need to be activated. So he coordinates all that's needed. He works with all the areas to make sure the emergency coordination works and involved with all the governmental, private and volunteer agencies. There's mutual aid. We all help the different areas. Uh, during the last fire, the people in the area that were involved with the fire were busy with their own uh, problems. So uh, Rob asked for volunteers from other areas. And if we're well trained and we'll talk about that, we can go into other areas and help out as much as possible. Mutual aid, we're all in this together. And he assumes authority for all the emergency uh, communications and the performance of everything we do hands on. Now in each area, the EC in area two, it's me, in, the, in times of disaster, we evaluate what communication needs we have. We look and see what EOCs need to be started. We establish emergency communications networks. And actually we established it way before this. We've established this in, in our area many, many years ago. And we also have regular tests. We have ORTs with realistic drills. We have this once a month in area two. We got to test what goes on. And the best part of that is to make sure that everything works. We hope for failures because during the test, we can fix it. So there should be no failures during the actual process. We promote ACS and ARES as a voluntary service for the benefit of the public. I'm out there trying to get everyone to, to join. You can see me at every location talking about ACS ARES. I also work with all the government, private and volunteer organizations to make sure that we can handle them. And I'm constantly talking to a lot of agencies that want to start EOCs and want to become a member of it. We want to recruit as many people as we want, people that want to help their community. And we also involved in training, organization and preparedness of local ACS and all ACS areas. All the ECs hopefully uh, want you to learn and train in any area that you want to and also check in into any area that you want to to see in case of emergency if everything works well. Under the ACS, we work under FEMA, which uh, operates the OES, as I mentioned before, and all this we, uh, we mentioned. So the emergency coordinated duties on this really comes in under Ventura County, the ACS radio officer who is our district emergency coordinator and the ECs are right beneath it. There's one EC for each area. To activate, we are not allowed to self-activate. If an emergency occurs, you don't go to the EOCs that you are supposed to be assigned to. In this area, we turn to Bozo. We listen and I give a little talk about uh, every uh, 20 minutes, 20 minutes after the hour, on the uh, half hour, uh, 20 minutes to and on the hour to tell you if we're activated. And if we are, We, uh, I ask for volunteers, who's available and where we should do and what's happening. Uh, also, if you can monitor the county, so uh, monitor the area two, if you're in area two, monitor the county, see what's happening. If you can't hear either of them at the 20 minutes after, 20 minutes to, and on the hour, go through all the different areas and they're all listed, all listed on vccom, vccomm.org. When appropriate and we're activated, we uh, operate the net control from home or uh, we do it before ACS is activated. 
I mentioned uh, on the 20 minutes after, 20 minutes to, and on the hour, I'm doing it from home or mobile. The net operates as a check-in net to determine the names availability of Area 2 members. And it's put into operation when we're activated. Why do we worry about activation? Because we're covered by the county by insurance when we're activated. Injuries to ourselves are not covered by county insurance because we all have our own insurance. Uh, injuries we cause others are not covered. If the county is sued, they will not be covered by insurance if we're not activated. All these are, are covered when we're activated. We're all covered by insurance and it's all terminated when we're deactivated. Under this, under Ventura County, there's eight areas. We're in area two. Each area has its own plan. Each area has its own set of internal communication network. There's no one size that fits all. We have a large area in Thousand Oaks. There's small areas in Piru, Ojai. But we're all in this together. And the DEC ties this all together. This is a uh, little thing of uh, all the different EOCs that are around. We have EOCs in Moore Park, in Santa Paula, Fillmore. We have the different hospitals, Community Memorial, BC Memorial, Pleasant Valley, Las Robles. And we have it also in Red Cross headquarters, Simi Valley Police, Port Wainimi, Oxnard. We staff all the EOCs for our ORTs to make sure it all works. But in, when we have an emergency, we staff only the EOCs that we need to. And one of the major reasons is staffing. And I'll talk about staffing a little bit later. Here are the eight areas and we are area two. So let's talk a little bit about area two. We have several EOCs. Some of them are agencies. East County Sheriff's Station is an agency. City of Thousand Oaks is an agency. That is our alternate. We are building up the City of Thousand Oaks. We just put a new install in there, installing HF equipment and having separate equipment for our digital as well as our uh, voice. We are setting it up so that uh, City of Thousand Oaks is on equal par with East County Sheriff Station. So if we need an EOC that's the lead EOC where net control starts, we can use either one of them. Los Robles Maine and Los Robles East are other agencies. We do have partners. Some of our partners are Cal Lutheran, Amgen and Oak Park. Uh, their partners, they uh, uh, have bought the equipment for us and we provide the operators. In a lot of the different uh, other areas, they have their agencies and partners also. We'll go through each of them in a moment. Here's what it looks like. We start out with emergency. The East County Sheriff's Station also operates to and from the state of California, the OES, to and from the county. Uh, so we uh, can operate and some of the other EOCs can talk to county on the dot 200. Each of them talks into the network. One of the things that, that we have at each of the EOCs is we have the same type of equipment. We all have Olinkos. Uh, people that came before me, uh, people like Ken Larson and Hugh Bosman, when they set up all the emergency uh, EOCs, came up with the idea that if we have all the same equipment in all of the different uh, EOCs. If you're trained in one, you're trained in all, which is very good thinking. And they started the uh, and built up the East County Sheriff Station. And that was in, in about 2004. So what we provide, we provide communi communications between all the EOCs and support agencies and partners. We also have a trailer. The trailer is right now stationed at TO City. The equipment is in TO City. We take the equipment, we put it in the trailer, we can go out anywhere and we can operate. And also has the same equipment that's in the EOCs. So if you're trained in that, you're trained in the, in the uh, uh, trailer. We provide information to everybody. So we have emergency communications. We also provide transfers. Of course, we're collecting and verifying everything that's going on during the disaster. We do have specific summary reports. We talk about doing this over digital. 
And we also, the lead EOC, the net control, tells the other EOCs and agencies and partners what's going on. We do have what's called an InfoNet. InfoNet we run on the Grissom repeater, and I'll be talking about that in a moment. I'm gonna go through a couple of slides very fast because I've got other things I wanna talk about and a lot of uh, time. We provide, uh, most of the customers have good emergency communications within their individual organizations, but to other organizations, they usually use cell phone or whatever they have, but if that fails, it's on us. And some of the systems are not a person to person thing. You call someone on a telephone, that doesn't help. We, because we're on the radio, we have a speaker, everyone can hear. It's almost like a, a conference call between all the different areas. We also have a control operator that can, has a priority flow of traffic, which is great. Someone is taking charge and he's always listening, he or she is always listening to what's going on. So there's a control. No call ever goes unanswered unless, unless having trouble with our hearing aids, but we try and answer all of our calls. We're decentralized and one of our EOCs goes down, another EOC can take over. And we have practiced that during our ORTs where the East, uh, East County Sheriff's Station, we make believe it failed and we see if any of the other EOCs take over. We have ACS operators at each EOC. We say they're assigned to specific net and counting and all that. We'll talk about it in a second. Sometimes we do that, sometimes we have to multitask. Depends how many volunteers we have. We send it to a central analyst. Now we do have an area two central analyst and it's uh, Gould uh, and, uh, and he is our analyst for area two. And uh, if he's not available, we choose someone else for an analyst and finds out what's going on and keeps a spreadsheet and gives us a big picture and can use the pack of radio to all the OCs to say what's going on at the top of each hour. All this is variable because it depends how many people show up. Usually the analyst will be in the lead EOC. If it happens to be East County Sheriff's Station, if it happens to be in TO City or where we ever, where we have to be depending on what the disaster is. The info net. We have people who are, have a background check and they're able to get into different EOCs. They're trained, they can do their job. We have a lot of other amateurs out there, a lot of non ham uh, and a lot of non hams uh, that want to hear what's going on. So we use Grissom and we monitor Grissom at our lead EOC. Well, when you check in to the, during uh, our regular Tuesday night, Net, we hear who you are and we know who the people are out there that normally talk to us. That's why we keep a list of it. And when you call in on Grissom, if we know who you are, that helps verifying in the information you want to give us. So the info net is a other net that we use in case of emergencies to hear what's going on. And we can pass it on to the various agencies and partners as needed. We have a distributed architecture and I've got to go a little bit quicker. We distribute across all locations. In the case one location is overloaded with work, we can distribute what's going on. And same thing with the radio equipment in case we have a disaster and one of the EOCs or the lead EOC is destroyed. So we do have all our, in this scenario two, we have the analyst net, which I'll talk about in a moment. We have a voice net. We can uh, talk to the mutual aid cities the, on HF and uh, DCS 22. Also go on the area two info net on the bottom. We also connect to the CERT team and DART team. We have a lot of members who are CERT and DART that are also ACS members. So let's talk about the nets. We have the voice net. This is on Bozo in the uh, Area two, we have to use that for checking in and staffing net. It can communicate with all the EOCs, the mobile net, support for DART and CERT. And we, we use East, East County Sheriff Stations on net control, while TO City has an alternate, 
or we can use any of the other EOCs as net control as the weed EOC. Then we have the InfoNet on, on uh, Grissom, which we talked about. It implements the InfoNet or hearing what's going on in the rest of uh, Area 2. We have a maintenance net. This is the Area 2 440 net. It's used to resolve uh, problems and technical problems, but we can also use it for voice traffic. If the bozo goes down, we can go on 440 if needed. We'll monitor that at the weed EOC. So in case someone can't get into bozo, we can still hear them. All of these are flexible, but this is a plan and we try and go by the plan. So uh, there's, uh, there's channel two, the regular channel two, which carries the voice messaging. That's, we call it channel two because if we look at our uh, uh, from Ventura County, the frequency plan on area two, on the 440, the two meters, the 220, channel two is supposedly all our different uh, networks. Channel one would be all the networks in area one. The channel two analyst net is a 220 net channel two. But again, we can use that for voice traffic, anything that's needed but typically we use that for the analyst net when available. So we take in here, because we monitor the, the 220 on all our EOCs and we can collect and disseminate information on that. So we do have a central analyst and uh, takes charge and listen to what's going on and gives hour, hourly reports to the all EOCs. Can be voice, can be packet. Then we have the county net, which is on 145.200, channel nine on the standard list. And that's when we have direct communications between the lead EOC or all area EOCs and the county. We test this out when we do the county ORT. They, they, each EOC checks into the county. We also have our packet net, 145.050, that uh, checks that we use that along with the 220, 223.580 to be able to connect to every EOC and all our, our partners and everyone that's out there. We check on this on our ORT nights. If anyone, visitors, guests want to check into the packet neck, make sure all your equipment works and we can use it for all kinds of communications. Why do we want to use packet? We want to use packet because uh, sometimes we have long lists from hospital to hospital, information we want to, uh, want to transfer. If you want to transfer large information using the phonetic alphabet, that could take hours and years. We have a hospital net that connects all the hospitals, 224.100. We test this out once every six months to once a year. It's not very active, and typically we don't use that a lot. We, uh, we connect to LA County, the DCS 22 net. We check this out every Monday night at 6.30. Uh, we have our inter interop 22, and I typically call into uh, LA County and anyone else is available to check in during that time. I can give you the information later on. When we have our state and regional HF nets, we have it on Monday morning and Wednesday uh, uh, noon, uh, uh, 10 o'clock, excuse me, and we check in. So people check in on Tuesday night, that's into the area. We check in on county, county checks into the state and state checks into FEMA. These are all checked on a weekly basis. And we check into the Southern region, as I say, Southern region and state OES. We use our tactical calls, all these are listed and it's all on vccom.org under the area two uh, tab. This is also listed in on the uh, website. All this will be this whole presentation will be uh, on the uh, on the website momentarily. Some other frequencies. Staffing. We staff with radio operators in net control, ensure that the traffic flows smoothly. Operators and the technicians to make sure that we keep it operating if we have enough people. 
We can use non-radio operators for message handling, administrations, and an analyst. But again, this depends on how many people we have. In the old days, we had uh, several non-hams as message handlers. They used to come to our ORTs, and they really helped out. They're the ones that uh, wrote down people checking in and all that kind of stuff. If we can use that again, that would be wonderful. Now, staffing. Now, this is very this is variable because uh, we may not be able to get all the people we need, or we have to multitask. Typically, in the East County Sheriff's Station, we have one person operating with the county net, and also may operate the HF net, DCS 22, or simplex as needed. There's not a lot of information going over each of these. Then we have an operator to handle the area two net, the 220 and 440. And we have one operator to handle the info net and the uh, uh, analyst. Now, again, it depends how many people we have. The less people we can operate with two, I've operated with one person. You take all the chairs away, put everything on a speaker and you run from microphone to microphone. We do the best we can. If we had people, more people, we have message handlers and we have officer positions and administrator and we have all different people, but typically we don't have the people for that. But we have it in the plan in case we do have people. In Thousand Oaks, of course, it may take over as our as net control. We have the same thing. And also uh, because we need to take over in case these kind of sheriff station goes down. So we need as many people. But in looking at all the other areas, we have to have one operator to do voice, one operator is digital. And if possible, if we have an analyst somewhere and message handlers, it would be great. Three would be perfect, but we do what we can. So in looking at this, if we look at it, we have three people per shift. We have three shifts, that's nine people. If in one EOC, if we open up two EOCs, that's 18 people for one day. If we have a total of 51 people that's available in, uh, in area two, we have to have 18. Many people may not be available. As you can see, we do the best we can. If we have more people and they're trained, we can sure make this work a lot easier. We do the best we can. So let's talk about operations for a moment. What do we operate? We can operate two meters, 220, 440, HF, 75, 80 meters, 40 meters, six meter and simplex. We wanna be trained on all of these. All of these are in the VCCOM website and on the different scripts we talk about Tuesday night and the county mentions what, what's available. We wanna be trained in all of them because if something happens, something may not work. If you know how to use HF and simplex, if the two meter doesn't work, we can use simplex. If you're trained on all the different procedures, not to be an expert, know how to use it, it's wonderful. You, you, sometimes people are very nervous when there's an operation, but if you know how to do it, it makes you a lot more comfortable. Digital, there's FL Digi, there's Packet, there's WinLink, and there's Morse code. Last year, we had one of our ORTs with a Morse code operator at each EOC and we had them checking in and it worked and it worked fantastic. It's another option that we can have. We like to do it more often. We are used going through uh, Steve and his radio uh, Morse club and we're trying to get volunteers. The more things that we can use, the more things we're comfortable with, the more things we can check out on our ORTs and from home, the more we can do in case of emergency. In the field, we have our trailer. There's uh, two trailers. There's the area two trailer and there's the county trailer. And each of you have your handhelds and your mobile units. Uh, the more you can use, the more that's uh, uh, operable, you can use your handhelds, get into us on Grissom. And if you can go to an area safely, it would be great for the help. So in looking at this, we do training and operational readiness tests. 
the training, we do voice and digital training on the job, people on their EOCs at each location every Tuesday night. Also, every now and then, we have people come in on Tuesday nights when we're at our ELC at East County Sheriff Station that need to be trained on digital and want help to run the networks. We do it. And we're also going to schedule some classroom training. Stu is helping out and he is wonderful on this, on doing training on the digital. We set up some classes, which now we can't do because of the virus, but we'll set them up again on teaching people uh, two, two meetings on everything digital. We do our operational readiness test. We do it monthly. We have enough people. We want to try and get a three people, two people in each EOC. Make sure that the equipment works. Make sure that all the EOCs are staffed. So we do training in each EOC and we practice different scenarios. That's the wonderful part. One time we made believe that East County was down and someone took over. Another time I've gone out to each EOC and disabled maybe Bozo or the 220, or I disabled some of the FL Digi or, or some of the digital and see how people react. Boy, it's mean sometimes, but it works. And we all learn what, we're, what we can do. There's minimal requirements that we're trying to push. Uh, one of the minimal requirements is that we have people to check. We want people to check in. We want people to check in at least once a quarter Hopefully they can check in every Tuesday night, but you must check in at least one and a quarter. Make sure we know if you're an ACS or ARES member, your equipment works, you're still alive, you're still interested. We also have during regular times to do an event once every six months. Come to an, uh, an ORT, come to one of the uh, EOCs and just to make sure you can work that equipment. And also it could be an event. We have all the different events, the different marathons and the different bicycle races. You can test your equipment out and test how to operate and how to be involved with the network. So at least every six months or twice a year, we try and do at least two events, one maybe being an EOC, one being an event, maybe two events, do what we can. Now our management team. Our management team has up and down the line, experienced, highly talented management team. Many years of management experience. The section emergency coordinator is John Kitchens, NS6H. Our district emergency coordinator, also our radio operator, is Rob Hansen, W6RH. The assistant DEC is Rick Tate, KQ6NO. All of these people are in charge of us. Down here in area two, I'm the EC, and the assistants that we have here, AECs in area two is Andy, K6AGL, Stu, AG6AG, and Charlie, KG6CLT. All, all of this, this whole management team has years and years of management experience, well qualified, and can help you out in anything that you need. I would hope that you would want to join us and in emergency communications. We need your help. You need to help your community. Remember part 97, what we all have signed on for, says that we help out in emergency communications. And not only do we wanna get personally trained, we also wanna check out our equipment. I this is, did this kind of quick, wanted it to get in 45 minutes to make sure there's time for questions. So I may have missed something or two, or maybe you wanna add something. So I'd like it open up to all questions. So everybody, what do you got? Zach, can I uh, request that you uh, unshare your screen? All right, amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, please, if you have a question, uh, go ahead and unmute one at a time. Looks like Stuart has one. Go ahead. Good morning all on the uh, video net. Uh, one thing that I think, Zach, you might remember, um, there were noting the, our most of our repeaters are very reliable, but sometimes they fail. You might remember when Dave Gilmore used to occasionally turn off 
the Sulphur Mountain machine remotely and force us into, into simplex relays. And that's something we haven't done in a while, but it's something that with the damage that the Hill and Wolsey fires did a couple of years ago, it, we could very easily have either a repeater be taken out or the feed lines going to a repeater get taken out. So that might be something what might want to think about. Oh, and sure. that also is why you and, you and Area 4 and a couple others uh, practice our simplex nets as well. Yeah, so what do you do in your area? Uh, you, uh, we have, in Area 4? Yes. Uh, we have to... Um, Okay, I think we've got a we've got a dupe, duplicate signal here somewhere. Uh oh. But everyone else can mute for the moment, please. Go ahead. Yeah, we we have done uh, simplex in, in our area, and one of the things that we've done is we have mapped out on uh, in using in our case using Google Earth, but mapped out. Who can hear who operating from their normal equipment in Simplex? Um, it is real useful to know, like in my, in my case, my antennas are hiding in the attic. Not ideal, but it works. Uh, in the case of Jay, he's, uh, he actually is not using the repeater tower for his home station. But he does have a, a Comet CX-333 partway up that tower. And he can generally hear anyone in Area 4. So if the repeater goes out, um, then Jay is one of the folks who can generally talk to everybody. We've got a few other folks who can talk to, who can talk to about 70, 80 percent of the people in Area 4 from their home station. And we've gotten so that we can do relays between the different areas it, or different areas of Boxnard and, and Wainimi. It's a, we've got some interesting topography and some people are blocked by um, either buildings or dirt for being able to do easy simplex. But we're able to relay from one to the other. Okay. That's fantastic. I do want to mention something. You do join in to the area that you live in or work in, but you can also check into other areas. And the biggest thing is you can also train with other areas as well as your own. One of the things that I have mentioned in the district meetings is that we hold our ORTs every month. County does it every other month. If you want to come in, on one of the months that you're not doing county and to sit in on one of our ORTs at one of our EOCs, you're welcome at all uh, for everything. When we do training, it's open to all areas. We're all in this together. Stuart has wonderful things in area four, all of our other areas and all the ECs in other areas do fantastic things. We try and help out everyone that needs help. Any other questions? Go ahead, Mark. Hi, Zach. Good morning, all. Um, has there been any thought about uh, alternative, um, and I'm talking about uh, Oak Park um, the School District, only because the access to both facilities is, is very limited. Um, and I know we have Station 36, um, but was just trying to think if there's a alternative um, uh, places where we might be able to set up uh, so we don't have to kind of go through the whole school district uh, thing to, to get to the uh, to get to the radios. Um, you know, I mean, there's like East Campus, there, there's the Los Robles, there's the Thousand Oaks. I mean, each of these kind of have a, uh, a way we can get into it. But with the school district, it, it, it's kind of tough. So I just didn't know if there was any kind of discussion maybe out there that uh, 
if there's some alternative uh, uh, locations that might we might look at down the road. Yeah, we've had many, many meetings with the Oak Park people, with Diane and Annette. And uh, because they're a partner and not an agency, we have to go by what Oak Park wants us to do. So working with them. Now we've gone up and uh, found out that the best place was up there in the middle school. Now they're talking about getting more equipment and different equipment and other antennas. And uh, I've been up there and Stu has been up there many, many times testing things out and doing some training and we'll do more of it. But it's really up to the Oak Park people because I think their IT people also have their own emergency net that's between all their schools that they maintain. Uh, so in case of emergency, they have their handhelds and then uh, they have a, people at the EOC. Now we had a problem with the fire department uh, as an EOC, because every time the truck went out, they had to lock the gate, which means we couldn't get in or get out one way or the other, which would have been a perfect answer to have the, so it's really up to Annette and Diane and the Oak Park partners on if they have another place in Oak Park that they can use. Uh, we'll work with any anybody anywhere to make it better. Zach, can okay. I make a quick comment? Yeah. Um, Mark, I don't believe that there is any reason why you couldn't cross train at the other EOCs once we get these opened up as well. Uh, and there's no reason that you couldn't participate at another EOC during an emergency. Uh, bear in mind that we're all one big happy family, and of course we're certainly concerned about Oak Park. But if our limitations say that we won't have access to EOCs there, there's not a lot that we can do about it, as Zach said. And, uh, you know... I, I want to see all you folks train, and I want to see you exercise that training, you know, all the time. And the best way to do that, and of course, you know, we're all working towards the same goal with this COVID thing, but once the EOCs begin to open back up, uh, you know, card-carrying ACS members are allowed to go into those EOCs. So uh, just bear in mind that uh, training isn't just at your EOC. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry to interrupt. And also, uh, Pat has his hand up over there, uh, just so the next question goes to him. Okay, one, one thing before I do that. If you look at the website under the Area 2 tab, I have a listing of all the EOCs, including a MapQuest, not MapQuest, uh, one of the map programs on how to get to each EOC. And all you have to do is ask permission so that we know how to let you in or when to let you in. And you can go to any of the EOCs during any ORTs, just tell us ahead of time. Uh, go ahead with the next question. Thank you. Yeah, Zach, any idea when the EOCs are gonna open back up? Okay, the latest word I got is, uh, I don't have any word from the partners yet, but from the agencies, East County Sheriff Station, uh, actually, as of yesterday when I called, uh, I can go in there now uh, because I've had my two shots and it's 14 days afterwards, and I can bring in assistant as long as they have the same thing. So East County Sheriff Station is kind of opening up slowly. Uh, T.O. City is almost in the same boat. The hospitals, I don't even want to think about that because that's where the problems are. And the partners, I'll have to go to each partner, so I don't know when they can open up. Does that answer? Yeah, um, actually I have another one. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you use the same numbers on each of the frequency bands. Is there a standard, um, band or frequency numbering system for those of us with multi-band yes. systems? Yes. If, if you go on the uh, website, the VCCOM website, and you go up under frequencies, if you look at the frequency list, when it shows area two, uh, excuse me, when it shows uh, uh, two meters, if you look, there's numbers on the left-hand side. And it shows like number one is Simi Valley repeater, <coughs> number two is Bozo, number three is area three, and it goes on. And then when you hit 11, 
11 through uh, 19 is the simplex. No, but uh, that's for one band. I've got a multi-band. It's same same thing. Go down in the in yeah, the but it's, I can only have one channel too. A channel uh, two, VHF channel two, UHF channel two, two twenty. Um, I mean, can, and there can are I interject ways here? Conflicting those duplicate channel numbers, so uh, you, to program a single multi-band uh, unit. Okay. Can, well, oh, oh well. See, when I say channel two, I mean it's channel two on the list. Uh, VC Commerce, how you put it in your radio. Zach, you Zach, can I interject here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, typically what I do on my multiband radios, depending on how many available channels I have, uh, for VHF, I'll do 1 through 50, right? For UHF, I might do 51 through 99, okay? And I just know... Right, so let's be realistic here. If it ends in two, we know it's area two. If it ends in one, we know it's area one. And there's no reason that you can't, like uh, my mobile has a thousand channels. So I can put one through uh, 99 as being VHF and then one, uh, 101 through, uh, you know, 199 as UHF. And if it supports 220, I can put... 201 to 299 and I just understand in my head that I have to add those numbers. Uh, anyway, that's typically how the guys yeah. do it. Uh, and uh, you know I, I hope that kind of answers your question, Pat. Yeah, I've been trying to do that, but I don't have quite as many channels on mine, especially the 991 only has 100. So break it at 50 because really only on the 991, all you have is uh, the um, uh, oh, uh, VHF and 440, right? So And HF. Well, yes, but HF, HF typically you're spinning the dial, okay? I mean, realistically, when I do an HF net, I'm spinning over to whatever that frequency is on my HF rig. A uh, little bit different concept there. Uh, and I don't have all the frequencies plugged in on uh, my 991. I know, shame on me, right? But I don't oh, need, right. yeah, I, <laughs> but I don't need all the frequencies because my operation from my base station here is with county and area too. And typically, VHF rules when it comes to contacting other areas. But again, uh, I'm more than happy to post my uh, uh, frequency configuration for my 991 as a uh, spreadsheet if you'd like, Pat. And I can, uh, if you if you email me, I'll be happy to email the, the spreadsheet over to you. Uh, my email is Stu, that's Sierra Tango Uniform, at alphagolf6alphagolf.org in an ag6ag.org. Uh, anyway, okay? Okay, no, thanks. Anyone else? Hey, Zach, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, if you're going to just break into this brand new as a fresh volunteer, what, what would you recommend to start? What kind of training, contact you, what, what should you do? Okay, first thing is contact me. Because uh, I can give you uh, 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 all the, the, the trend, how to do ARES, what's uh, required for ARES, then what's required for ACS and all that. Uh, a lot of what I uh, would talk about would be what under the uh, area two tab. In there it shows, uh, if you read through it, I have training programs in there. I do talk about FEMA, I talk about everything that you need to know. But I'll also tell you that if you give me a call. So you first give me an email and we'll set up a time to call for anyone that is interested and it'll go from there. Okay, okay, because you, you recall that when I when I broached this subject before, there was this FEMA training that right. you recommended, and I had so much trouble with that. That you're still recommending that I take it. Right. Well, a FEMA training training so far is not a requirement. It's a nice to have in, in uh, nice to have, but it may become a requirement in the future. I know uh, OES wants it as a requirement, and we may follow. But it's always good to have a couple of the uh, FEMA, uh, couple of the courses done just to know what they do, the people in charge of us, to know what uh, the NIS, what, what the 
systems are, to know what incident control is, uh, to know all the different things that are going on and where right. we fit in. It. So it's always good and it's open book test and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's not uh, a college course. So it's yeah. always good to do it. And at some point in the future, it will be a requirement, but they haven't pushed it yet. Until yeah, I understand that. As you know, the bureaucracy involved in that is immense. Yeah, and so the, we do the best we can. Yeah, okay. So it's a good thing to do. Some people can't do those sort of things. And okay, we'll do uh, on-the-job training. We'll do what we need to do. A lot of people have different ways of learning things. We'll work with you. All we need is someone that has the, the desire and we'll do the rest. Okay. I appreciate the answer. Hey, Jack, uh, Andy uh, Moorhead's been waving his hand. I think he has a question. I don't see him. Yeah, that, that, thanks. I didn't want to jump in. Hey, hey, Zach, wanted to uh, thank you for all the information. You know, I've been involved with this stuff for a little while now, but I, I honestly didn't understand how it all fits together. And that really helps me, right? Because I, I knew some Cal OES, yeah, but I didn't know how we were all related to them. And then and then the ACS and RACES I knew, but the DCS one, I didn't realize that was the same too, just depending yeah. on what those things were. So that really helped me. Yeah. So, and, um, and what we do is once a year, I started it two years ago. I was going to do it last year, but uh, the virus came in. We do have a uh, meeting at East County Sheriff's Station. Uh, one of the nights that we can get together socially as well as to talk about ACS and give a little presentation. This came from one of the little presentations. And uh, as of last year, the Sheriff's Department said that they will uh, host it. Mm -hmm. So we uh, will get pizza and sodas and all that kind of stuff. Okay, thanks. Two years ago, I paid for it. Uh, well, people also gave in money and it was really neat. So we'll be doing having a yearly meeting yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about all the different things because uh, some people may not be up to speed on everything, right. but we'll do it. Right. So my question is kind of looking forward because we've been out of the EOCs and I, I along with uh, Andy Ludlam, K6 uh, AGL, I go to the uh, Los Robles East. Yeah. We've been out a year, the world changes. Um, I would imagine that there's, you know, with the, the served agencies, they have some kind of like disaster plans or like in the you know corporate world's business continuity plans that they update and so forth. And, you know, the EOC would be part of that. Yeah. I wondered when do they go to revise them or, you know, since we've been out a year, is there a, you know, is, you know, would that be something to go look at, right? Because, you know, needs change, modes change and so forth. What's the kind, how does that process work? Like, how do we know that we're appropriately serving our served agencies? Okay, I meet with all of the different leadership. I meet with the Amgen uh, people. I meet with the uh, Oak Park people. I meet with the hospital people. Mm -hmm. I meet with the TO people, like East County Sheriff's. I see them every Tuesday. When, when mm -hmm. So I meet with everyone. And the first thing I do is I sit down and say, what do you got? What do you need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so not every one of them yeah so it's, sometimes it's hard to talk to the hospital people yeah, yeah but, a... but I, I get a hold of them so and also one of the interesting things is every one of our radio rooms is co-located with their eoc mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean the hospital ones were in the closet but in the closet is right next to the their conference room which is their eoc right. on all of the hospitals yeah, yeah. in uh yeah. oak park we're uh, there in the uh, maintenance uh, area, which is where their EOC is. Mm -hmm. In uh, TO City, it's right there, right where their EOC is. In Cal Lutheran, their EOC is about four steps away. So we're co-located with all of their EOCs, so they see us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, 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 I guess my, my question is a little more to the, the details, right? So we use ICS. Uh, was it uh, 213 forms uh, pre principally? Yeah. And yet you see a lot of these, you know, the, these, um, you know, agencies and so forth, things are very much form-based, you know, on handhelds or whatever. Exactly. And, you know, getting that information into something that we can send, you know, just, you know, I think that's where, you know, we, we need to keep checking that, you know, we, we know what it is, right? Because I, I look at the, like the USGS, um, that form, that web-based form, where you know that 
you know, gives you the, I think it's the XML or, you know, JSON output. And we can send that easily over the, over sure. the airwaves. But, it, you know, that took that work to get that done. And, you know, I just wonder is, is a 213 form what, what they still want? I don't have the answer to that, right? But, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we would want to find out that, you know, we, we have the, you know, the, uh, you know, relevant mechanism to carry what they need to carry. Well, in actuality, one of the interesting thing is since the, the virus, we've come up with a win link. Mm. So when we start getting back and I start having meetings with all the leadership, there's something else to bring up and to see if we want to change to add that to the mm -hmm. various instructions that we have. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that hasn't been discussed yet because we're not back yet. Yeah, no, that's what I say. So look at looking to the future because we, you know, you've been we've been out of there for a year now and then the world moves on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yes. Oh, no. Well, thank you. Appreciate the answer. Okay. Anyone else? Zach, Warren has a question. Yeah. So when you were talking about the uh, Thousand Oaks City Hall EOC, you're, I yeah. guess you're getting that up and equipping it. You mentioned there's a trailer located there also. Yeah. Did I understand correctly that if you wanted to populate the trailer with equipment, you have to remove it from the EOC? Uh, no, we, we have equipment in the EOC for the EOC. Underneath it, we have a uh, closet and we keep the trailer equipment in the closet. We're not allowed to keep it in the trailer because people can steal trailers. So I have all the equipment, separate equipment. And matter of fact, if you've ever been at the Seabark Field Day, I bring the trail out there with their equipment in it. So the separate equipment, separate antennas, everything is, is being stored in the EOC, but it's uh, designated for, for the uh, trailer. And we do have our regular equipment in the EOC. Real good, thank you for clarifying. No problem, no problem. Anyone else? 